Hey guys, Andy here. Uh, I'm making a video uh, in another hotel room because I'm traveling so much these days. Uh, it's almost, almost over. So I'm, I was in Chicago. So the first batch of records I'll show is from a couple of sh from a couple shops in um, Chicago. I was there for a conference, and now I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, for a uh, to work with a co-author. And then I'm back in Indiana for family stuff, so I'll probably find more records in Indiana because I love uh, my local uh, shop there. Then I'm back in Austin for a couple of days, and then I go to um, San Francisco. So you guys will definitely be seeing some finds from, um, from Amoeba because I've never been there, and I will definitely have to go even though I've done a lot of record shopping recently, and I should probably dial it back but I'm selling a bunch too so we'll see okay so this is from a record shop in Hyde Park this is called Hyde Park Records uh, is the record shop and they had quite a bit of cool stuff but a lot of it was in bad shape um, I mean they had some I mean, some records that if they had been in good shape would have been worth a ton uh, and would have been and are still super rare even in any in any shape but I, I didn't buy them because they they were beat to hell but uh, a few of them were in really good, uh, were in really nice shape. So here's what I grabbed: Sam Cook, Shake, and the change is gonna come. This is um, Victor RCA Victor, uh, first pressing mono. Uh, this has uh, Shake, a change is gonna come, uh, and it, I'm just a country boy is what I've, I've definitely heard. I, I haven't heard most of these. You kind of realize with some of these like these singers that even though they're some of the greatest of all time, they just recorded a lot. Uh, and so you only know their most famous songs. So I have his greatest hits and a few other uh, records, but he recorded a lot actually, and I don't know most of it. So another one I grabbed there, uh, another R&B singer, Bill Withers, Adjustments. So this is, I think, Bill Withers' fourth record, third or fourth record. I have the first two. It's on Sussex. Um, I listened to it there, actually, because I never heard it, but I love Bill Withers, and it sounded great, so I grabbed it. Okay, those are the only two I got from Hyde Park Records, but I think if you're in the University of Chicago area for any reason, you, you know, I don't know why people would be, but if you are, go to Hyde Park Records, just pop your head in. It's a pretty cool place, and they actually played really good music while I was in there. I was actually, I spent more time in there than probably what warranted from the records I bought, just listening to the records they were playing. Um, okay, so now stuff from Dusty Groove uh, in Chicago, which uh, is like one of these places that I think is on America's best of lists. And I think fairly so, but um, they certainly price a, a bit higher than maybe they should, but they're also extremely conservative with their ratings. So it's a trade-off. Um, fresh off the heels of picking up that um, Larry Young Into Something record back in Cleveland, I found Larry Young Contrasts. This is uh, an original stereo pressing. Um, this, of course, was released after the Blue Note uh, sale, to, sale to Liberty. It has some kind of signature on it. It's funny because the signature is not something that you could use to claim ownership. Who knows what that says? Um, and it's on the inside and the outside. Uh, so I, who knows? Maybe it's actually Larry Young's. I can't read it at all. So whoever signed it, signed it. That's fine. Um, that's, of course, uh, organ, soul, or um, spiritual post-bop kind of, uh, of jazz. Okay. Uh, other stuff I grabbed there. Got a second pressing, Coltrane Alm on Impulse. This has um, the ABC Impulse label on the inside, so I won't pull it out. It's the you know the, the rainbow label. Of course, it doesn't have RVG because he did not uh, have anything to do with that. Another one I picked up. Oh yeah, this one was cool. Jackie McLean Steeplechase on New Jazz. This, um, the front looks pretty good, I'd say. Got some tape on the seams, but it looks pretty good. Back, 
my, my water damage. Um, it's on the original New Jazz label, the purple blue label, purple, I guess, pure purple, Deep Groove, Rudy Van Gelder scratched in the dead wax. It's not a stamp at that point. Uh, so that's cool. This isn't, of course, the very first pressing of this record because it was released as Jackie's Pals um, on Prestige before it was released on New Jazz. So it's kind of funny because I always think of like New Jazz as having lots of super collectible um, first release rarities. But actually, um, actually, it seems like they had some reissues too. Uh, but still, that's a cool record. I'm a little worried. They, didn't, they don't have a listening station there. That's the only real downside of Dusty Groove which I think is kind of crazy, but, um, so I didn't get to listen to it, and it's been marked down repeatedly, so I ended up getting that record for like 12 bucks or 13 bucks. It looks like it's in VG, VG+, Plus, but New Jazz, it could, it could be noisy, because they use recycled vinyl, um, in which case, nothing you can do about it. Every copy you're ever going to get, no matter how much you pay, is going to be noisy unless you somehow get that one that they didn't use recycled vinyl. Okay, the next one, again, from uh, Dusty Groove. This is an upgrade copy for me. Cecil Taylor Quintet, Looking Ahead. There he is with his piano. Um, this, I think, uh, this is a mono um, first pressing on Contemporary. It's funny to me that Cecil uh, Taylor was on Contemporary early on because he's probably the most avant-garde of the avant-garde. Um, so you would think maybe he would have been on Impulse, or uh, at the very least not on the the West Coast labels, but um, he certainly, I love this record. I, lo I already have a copy mono that's in kind of rough shape, and that was 20 bucks, so I said, hey, I got to upgrade. And I'll sell off that other one or give it to somebody. Um, okay, last one from Chicago, and then I'll get to the stuff that I just picked up here in Madison. The stuff in Madison's actually, I think, much more exciting than the stuff in Chicago. Of course, the cities are it's just the opposite. But um, to grab this, this is a second pressing. McCoy Tyner, live at Newport. Um, this is on the again this the um, the rainbow label, so it's not a first pressing, but that's fine. Uh, these things still sound, I think, pretty good. Uh, the impulse second pressings up until some point uh, when they went to that weird, the non-impulse looking labels. I think they all sound pretty darn good. Okay, now I'm going to get to some really cool stuff. Um, this place that I went to here in Madison tonight, I, I've i gone a couple times. Every time I've been in Madison for work, I've gone to Strictly Discs. It's the only record shop I've been to in Madison, so maybe there are others that are even better, and I just have missed out. But uh, I like these this place so much that I, I just keep going back. So the first one I want to show is Blue Mitchell Quintet, Down With It. Um, so this is a first pressing mono on Blue Note with a ear mark in the label, Rudy Van Gelder, 27 years of Blue Note uh, inner sleeve. So of course, whenever you see that, you have to check to make sure. but upside down. Doop. There it is, the New York label, because that's the one that would make sense for when this was released. One side is Deep Groove, one side is not. So, I don't know, I had to check London Jazz Collector to see if this is one of the ones where that's correct for first pressing, or maybe it's a second run. Um, although it must have been, if, if it is a second run, it must have been a quick one because I thought this was, I'm pretty sure this record was released right, right before the sale. So the fact that it's got the, the ear means, uh, it would have been a, a quick pressing at that point. Okay. I'm going to spread the other two really, really cool ones out. Okay. So that way you guys will keep watching. So here's another Impulse second pressing. This one's from um, Strictly Discs here in Madison. Freddie Hubbard, The Body and Soul. This is the uh, Gatefold. Gatefold, 
Um, it's got Wayne Shorter on it. You know, this is a great record. I've been looking for a first pressing of this that didn't break the bank uh, for a while, and I haven't found it, so I got the second. And I'm happy to get the second. If I can only put it back in its cover now. Okay, so that's Body and Soul Impulse Stereo A38. Uh, at Euclid, they had a white label promo of that, but they were asking like 75 bucks, and so I, I didn't get it. Okay. Um, okay, well, here's a non jazz. This is the only non jazz uh, pickup in this whole lot. You guys, uh, I've, I, I may have shown some Harry Nilsson before, but I really love Harry Nilsson, and this is one I didn't have. This is Harry. Him as a kid on there. Um, 69 so this was before i think his you know this is before his craziest days of destroying his voice with john lennon um but i don't have it i've never listened to it so i picked it up because it was only a few it, actually they ended up giving it to me for free because of uh the jazz records i bought were not cheap um so okay now i'm going to pull in another one of these cool jazz records this one has been, I almost bought an upgrade to my copy at um, in Chicago at Dusty Groove. Glad I did it because I found a first pressing at Strictly Discs here in Madison. This is Mal Waldron, The Quest, with Eric Dolphy and Booker Irvin. This is the prep copy I have is on the later Blue Prestige. This one is on the new Jazz Purple. Um, I need to clean, I'm gonna clean this, but from what I've heard of other people's reports, this, I think, is one of those records where new Jazz used recycled vinyl, Prestige used recycled vinyl, which I think they did for the new Jazz releases from time to time. And so I don't think you can actually get a copy that isn't a bit noisy. If somebody knows for sure, let me know, because then I will keep looking. But this is only the first time I've ever seen the New Jazz label version of this in real life. I've seen um, videos with it on here, uh, and of course I've seen it on YouTube going for hundreds of dollars. Um, this, the cover on that one visually is in maybe VG... Fiji Plus, Tops, Fiji probably, but the vinyl looks great, but it, it on the system at the record shop, which wasn't the best system, it did sound a bit noisy, so we'll see. Um, okay, two more, uh, then my final uh, super uh, exciting uh, grab. Okay, I like Woody Shaw a lot. I don't know if I've shown much of him, but I like him. This is on Enya, which you guys know I love Enya recordings. This is Lotus Flower. This was only like ten bucks, so I grabbed it. Look at that! It's the it's I like I like how Enya did the the graphics and stuff. So it just looks kind of um, very simple, very straightforward. I haven't looked at the actual record, so this might be it might say Enya, and it's actually going to be Inner City. Who knows? I I didn't I didn't get to look at it. Um, so I didn't look at them because they have them labeled at this record shop. It's not like I'm buying things blindly. Um, the ones that I, I didn't care, that, that, that said excellent, I didn't, I trusted them, okay? Um, and then finally, or not finally, second to last, penultimately, grab, grab this, Inner City uh, release, Jackie McLean, Dexter Gordon, The Meeting, this is 1974, 1976 maybe, uh, on Inner City. I think it's actually an inner city. It's not, uh, yeah, it's licensed by Steeplechase. So it's an actual inner city. It's not any every label as inner city. I don't know. I, I don't know the music on those, but you know, Woody Shaw, I'm going to get it. And yeah, I'm going to get it. Jackie McLean, I'm going to get it. Dexter Gordon, I'm going to get it. So those records, you see them for a reasonable price. You just grab them because they're, they're going to be good. Um, I think. Okay. Now this one is. I just, you know, sometimes you get, I feel like the, the universe has, like, agreed to let me get a hold of Eric Dolphy records recently. So I showed you guys the stereo first pressing 
of Out to Lunch I picked up in Cleveland. At the same time, and I haven't shown it yet, I ordered a lot uh, from a guy on eBay that has a mono Liberty pressing. It, it says New York labels, but it's, a, it's, it's Liberty. So it's too bad. Uh, and it's not in the best shape, so probably going to get rid of that one. So I, anyway, I went from having you know no RVG out to lunches to two in a couple of days. One of which is just perfect. And I found it at a record shop, which is just, it's just cool to find these things in an actual record shop instead of buying them on eBay. This time, I was at this shop here in Madison, Shipley Discs, and I came upon another Eric Dolphy, another super rare record. Eric Dolphy out there with the, you know, super surrealist front cover. The cover's in iffy shape. It's got a seam split on the back. It's got a seam split on the bottom. It's got a seam split on the top, okay? So it's, it's not the best cover. The vinyl, purple label, new jazz vinyl. Rudy Van Gelder, scratched, RVG, not scratched, stamped, RVG stamped in the dead wax. Super heavy vinyl. I listened to this one. Either the recycling wasn't going on yet when they put this one out, or they, this at least this pressing, they decided not to use recycled vinyl. Maybe oil was cheap that week. It's not noisy at all, and the vinyl is in really nice shape. Really, really nice shape. So, cover, not the best. Vinyl, perfect. That means I'm going to be looking, try to get a hold of a beat up disc in a, uh, in a quality sleeve and put them together and have a uh, grail times 10 on that. That is such a that is such an awesome record. I don't know if you guys have listened to it, but if you haven't, pull it up on YouTube. I think that's one of Dolphy's best records. Um, and then, of course, it's always cool when you walk up to the counter and you've got these things on your on the record you go to sell to them. This is the, the stickers they had on this one. First copy I've seen in over 20 years. Uh, new jazz, very rare new jazz pressing. Um, so... Dolphy, I'm getting all the Dolphys. Uh, Outward Bound, that's the one I still need. Going to keep my eye open in Indiana. Maybe Indiana, the Midwest will, will deliver all the Dolphy to me. Cleveland will give me out to lunch. Madison will give me uh, out there. And Indiana will maybe give me um, Outward Bound. Whatever it was I said I didn't have. <laughs> so, yeah. Really cool uh, finds recently. I'm happy to have them. And I will uh, make more videos in the next uh, few months or few weeks. <laughs>